Hi Sally, thanks for joining me today. Now, we're going to focus on oncology today, so how long have you been working in this area? I've worked in oncology now for four years. At a high level, how does the development and commercialisation of novel anti-cancer treatments differ to other therapeutic areas? All therapeutic areas are more challenging now than they used to be. Um, I think in particular in oncology, we're in such an exciting time. Um, there are great opportunities for clinical development, um, especially looking at more targeted agents. Um, but with these opportunities inevitably come huge complexities, which we didn't see before. Um, I think, firstly, it's, it's hugely competitive. There are over 800 compounds in development at the moment. Um, and the attrition rate in oncology is very high. Currently, it's around 90%. Um, there are many reasons for this, um, and I suppose initially it's because we're moving towards personalised medicine. Uh, we're dealing with heterogeneous uh, patient populations now and looking more at subgroups of patients, um, which may differ to other chronic diseases as well. Um, so the number of clinical trials that is required has increased. Um, the difficulty in, in recruitment for these trials um, has also increased um, and the complexity is looking for biomarkers and um, biomarker tests um, that are validated um, in order to identify these patients is, is adding to the complexities as well. Um, and this of course all adds to the, to the cost um, and I think the years of uh, blockbusters um, of, well it's diminished now but especially in oncology so you've got increased costs for trials with reduced return on investment really, which is challenging. Um, so that, that's one of the initial challenges. I suppose once you get through the, the clinical trials, you then have increased challenges uh, with the regulatory authorities. Um, and then ultimately the biggest challenge at the moment for oncology products is, is reimbursement and market access. Now we're still seeing very widespread use of older chemotherapeutic agents within cancer. So what limits the introduction rate of the newer, more targeted therapies? I think we've touched on them slightly in, in the market access aspects, really, um, and the complexity of different subgroups of patients now. Um, the introduction of targeted agents has certainly shown a, a reduction in the use of traditional chemotherapies, but they're still very, very active, effective products for certain patients in, in oncology, um, and I think they will remain to be so. Um, <clears throat> I think the challenge that we face with new targeted agents is although we've come a long way in identifying biomarkers to um, select patients that will most likely benefit um, or patients that will have resistant mutations to a certain therapy, um, there is still a long way to go and there are limited um, biomarkers um, that are effective clinically to really identify these patients and predict the, the patient response. Um, and I think tumours that have certain mutations present can also simultaneously harbour or develop resistant mutations. Um, so a product that works in a patient now very effectively may not work in six months' time. Um, and this evolution of, of the patients all the time and their status relating to mutations means that we're going to have to change how we treat cancer patients and it may mean that one of those um, potential possibilities is to combine targeted agents with original chemotherapy or with other targeted therapies. So I think there will always be a place for, for the traditional chemotherapies, um, whether it be alone or in combination with, with the targeted agents coming through. And with these new, more personalised therapies, obviously identification of the right patients is critical. So how do you see development of diagnostics keeping pace with the drug sector in oncology? I think it needs to go hand in hand, really. I think there needs to be huge collaboration from a very early stage um, when clinical trials are being designed, um, right the way through to patient access um, in, in a clinical setting at the end. And I think there have been advances made in the diagnostic setting and certainly pathologists now are key players in the MDTs um, in numerous tumour types um, to ensure that testing is done and biopsies are taken um, and the right patients are selected for the right therapies. Um, 
but I think moving forward, the main challenges around this are just to ensure standardisation of this approach. Um, as always, there are key centres of excellence in the UK, but there are smaller centres that may not have the capacity or the funding available to ensure that, that they have access um, to the requirements that they need to ensure that the right patients get selected. So I think that's one of the areas that, that needs to be improved, really, the, the standardisation um, nationwide, really, to ensure that, that patients get access.